I made that. It's kind of an industrial electronic kind of vibe. That's overall what I do. But um, my first real group band that I was in was a, a really heavy, heavy, heavy death metal band um, with no singing. It was all just like glutteral shouting and growling and, <laughs> and things of that <laughs> nature. And um, and they had started life as a uh, as a Slayer cover band. <laughs> and <laughs> when I joined, of course, I mean, I I don't play much as far as individual instruments very well, so I, I wasn't really fantastic as far as guitar solos and things. So I joined playing keyboards, which they'd never had before, and it it changed the sound just enough that it kind of it it altered the band into a more orchestral kind of metal sound, and. Uh, uh, since I've moved out away from that area and I haven't played with them in, in so long, they're still a good band. They've they've gotten heavier and real and real like real heavy, but it, it's never been quite the same band, unfortunately, which is kind of sad. I mean, it, it went from the way it was with all of us together to going through several members after I left and being something something good, but not you know what it was. And I don't want to go out saying I took take credit for that, but. It's just funny how I went from that band, joined another band where I did do vocals, which was <laughs> absolutely horrible vocals. <laughs> <laughs> but it was metal, and they're supposed to sound sometimes kind of horrible, depending on the band. <laughs> and that's kind of the image we had, these horrible, awful vocals. But going from the first band to that band to now doing what I do and what I've been doing for, for several, several albums now, it's... It, it's definitely interesting to try genres and things that aren't quite what you're used to. <laughs> yeah, I think it's important. I, I think that from as a from as a songwriter, you become there's so much to learn off different genres about songs. I mean, the guys in King George, are Chris the guitarist and Michael, they're into a lot more heavy music than than I am. I mean, Chris is very into all that really heavy stuff. But when he plays it or plays it in the car or whatever, you know, I, I hear things that in turn influence me, you know, and um, mm. and I think as musicians, if you know, it's really important to, you know, take a lot in um, and not create barriers because I do notice a lot in some genres, in particular even in the metal scene, you know, some, some people can be very, they have the blinkers on and, and not really appreciate other styles, but yet the biggest metal bands, um, little do they realise the biggest metal bands appreciate other genres and get influenced by different things. You know, mm-hmm. you hear it like a Metallica fan say, oh, look, at oh, you too. Oh, they play three chords and, and the Edge is the worst guitarist, you know, out there, you know. But in reality, a lot of these bigger bands have got respect for bands like you too because... You know they've got something different, and they and they do do their thing the best way. So um, yeah, that's interesting to to mix the genres up and you know and get influenced by it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's funny that you mentioned about about how some bands in certain genres really enjoy music in other genres because um, I was while well, I was trolling around Facebook today, I um, I was watching. Um, I was reading a status by the lead singer from um, from Machine Head, who I got to see once, I think it was last year, maybe. Um, I don't remember for sure exactly, but it was the only time I've seen them live. And they're pretty heavy. They're a pretty heavy metal band. But the yeah. lead singer recently was congratulating the 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 pop singer Drake for having um, a certain number of album streams and things. And he went on to talk about how he respected Drake and enjoyed his music and things like that. And I'm just like, wow, this is this really heavy, heavy kind of metal guy listening to someone who's relatively light hip hop. Like, like Drake is, is relatively light stuff by comparison to stuff like maybe Kanye West. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's just funny how, how, somebody who makes a certain kind of extreme music can enjoy music at the extreme other end of the spectrum. 
Um, and and I, I myself, I, I make relatively kind of harsh industrial-esque kind of music, but I found myself over the last several years listening to more indie rock and more almost folky kind of folk music rock and more... Uh, more pop music than I used to. I, I have a little bit more of an appreciation for it than I did yeah. before when I was younger. Because when you're younger, you like a particular kind of music, and you're just like, no, everything else is crap, because this is what I like. <laughs> this is good stuff. <laughs> and then as you get older, you're just like, you know, okay, I, I like the melody in this song, but you don't want to tell anybody because it's like a guilty <laughs> secret, because you don't want anybody to know that you're the, the tough metal guy and you're listening to pop music. But <laughs> where I'm at now, it's just like, you know what? Yeah, I like some of this stuff. Like, I listen to a Katy Perry song once in a while. Not every song. I, I don't think I could sit and listen to an entire album's worth. <laughs> no offense, <laughs> Katy. But, um, <laughs> but you know, I, I do like a few things. And, and I, I, I like some of the vocal stuff and I like some of the, some of the music. And as far as, like, rap and hip-hop goes, I, I like to listen to... Uh, I bought the second Deltron album when it released on release day. was very satisfied with it. Um, I uh, what else? I listen to a little bit of. Here's a guilty pleasure here. I listen to a little bit of Gucci Mane sometimes. <laughs> so, <laughs> it, it's it's kind of silly, but you know, it's sometimes you enjoy it, and sometimes it's just straight the music. It doesn't really matter what he's talking about because he sometimes likes to just go off on some crazy tangents and <laughs> rap about nothing. But sometimes it's it's you like what he's saying too. So I mean, it's just interesting how genres can mismatch and and you can really enjoy things that you might not have otherwise if you really kind of stop and take a minute to really yeah. listen to what's out there. Mm-hmm. Now, I was talking to a friend of mine. I ran into it, a, a, an old college friend. Um, I haven't seen her since, uh, well, she's 10 years, 15 years old. I don't know. But uh, we ran into her and we are talking about music. We are talking about top 40s versus the indie music. And I told her, you know, I stopped listening to top 40 because they play the same song over and over and over again. You can call it request it, but they won't play it. And with me, since I, even before I started the show, um, I listened to a lot of independent musicians. And then when I started this, this project, um, I was actually learning how wonderful a lot of bands are out there and having a killer time learning and enjoying this music than I ever, ever did listening to uh, pop music on the top 40s. So it's kind of interesting how you guys, you know, what Spider was saying, you kind of change when you grow because you're all in that four, top 40 and what's popular, what's this and that. And when you get kind of older, yes, I said older, um, you kind of adapt into something that's a little bit different and enjoy that much better. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, for me, music's a journey. So, like, you know, yeah. if, you, if, you, if, you, if you're hanging around in the same room, um, you know, the same genre, you, you're not going to expand your, you know, options right. or, you know, and you miss yeah. out on a lot, you know. Yeah, so, and you're not going to learn yeah. anything either. No, no. That's why I love all, all, most styles of music, I love it, you know. If the song's good, it's good, you know. It's, right. Yeah, I was telling, a, 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 I have another young musician coming on in, in August. He's 18. He's a rap artist. And I told him, you know, when I, I told him on privately, and now I'm going to tell you guys too, is that I didn't want rap music on here because I wasn't too keen on it. But I told everyone, you know, if you guys are rap artists and you guys want to wow me, I'll put you on the air. This 18-year-old, his name is Classic. He's in New York. And he wowed me. I'm like, oh, my God. I love you. I, you, I yes. <laughs> and so now I'm playing <laughs> rap music. On yeah, my show, yeah. and so it's fantastic. I love his music; it's great. Yeah, absolutely, it's good. Well, sometimes <laughs> it just takes like a particular, a particular sound or a particular artist to just reach out and just grab you, and then you're a fan of a genre that you didn't really pay much attention to before. Once you get into that. You might have just only listened to this one artist, but then you start thinking, okay, well, maybe I'll start listening to something else, and you start listening to more by others who are similar, and you go on from there. And when you start kind of digging into some of these artists' catalogs, you you come across some some funny things, like um, certain uh, some of my favorite musicians have played different styles of music throughout their lifetime. Like um, I. I 
I'm a big, big fan of Nine Inch Nails. Probably my favorite band of all time. Seen them numerous times. And Trent Reznor got his start in college bands that were playing like 80s pop covers and he played the saxophone and it was just like it's so different hearing how he got his start to hearing how he went through a really heavy industrial phase in the 90s then went into a little alternative phase after that then went really electronic again and now he's doing kind of an electronic indie kind of thing and he's doing movie soundtracks and it's just interesting to hear someone evolve through all these different things in their careers and it happens to more artists than you think not necessarily because they they want to sell more things necessarily but because they're they're they want to try something different they want to or they feel something different and maybe they don't feel the same way that the old music makes them feel absolutely yeah and nine inch nails is very interesting because i had it i mean they were over here they're popular but it kind of went off the radar after they had that big hit closer and all that but Mm. i came across them again when they actually covered a u2 song for a or tribute album that's right Um, zoo station zoo station and uh Mm. And I'm a big U2 fan, and I was really interested to see them and bands like Garbage and Depeche Mode, of course, um, mm. to to you know cover U2 songs, you know, along the likes of The Killers and Jack White and all that. Um, but yes, you can see in Nine Inch Nails the the influence in a lot of ways through Trent Reznor and the some of the '80s stuff as well, um, the electronic the electronic side of things. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, guys, hold that thought. Write down your next what you're going to talk about next because we got to take a small break. <laughs> we, yeah. we do we do that a lot when we're getting into a topic. We got to write everything down and we'll come back to it. I promise. <laughs> okay. Cool. So, and then also I got to go into the chat room because we have a lot of activities in the chat room. So it's fantastic. So keep coming on, and anybody who wants to be brave enough and call in. Um, the phone number, which I got to scroll all the way up because I put it in the chat room, <laughs> is three six zero four six four four two one six. It's only here in the states, but if you guys want to add me to Skype, um, it's uh, let's talk about the music. Uh, let's talk about the music. Hyphenated shells, and that's where you can find me. I think I'll change that to our call letters too, make it easier. But anyway, I'll stop talking, and I'll be right back with more music. Woohoo! Let's talk about the music is starting. What is Let's Talk About the Music and why are you so excited about it? It's a podcast with controversial talk and a global mix of music. Oh, cool. How and where can I listen? Just go to letstalkaboutthemusic.com and click follow to be sure to get all the info about the bands that are playing and see their music videos. Then click on Spreaker or iTunes to listen live and even chat with other listeners and the host herself. What day and time is Let's Talk About the Music on? Every Wednesday night from 8 p.m. to midnight Pacific Standard Time. I think I'll tune in. Thanks for the info. Hey, hey, this is Stefan Groth from Germany-based fusion folk band Serp, and you're listening to Let's Talk About the Music. Hey, everyone. Want to know how you can help Let's Talk About the Music stay on the air and earn some VIP privileges at the same time? Go to patreon.com slash L-T-A-T-M radio to find out how you can get involved. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com. Let's talk about the music. Let's Talk About the Music is wanting your sponsorship to help support local independent music and musicians worldwide. We have different levels of sponsorship for everyone, including up-and-coming bands and musicians, to give a little more boost to your promotions. Let's Talk About the Music is also looking to podcast live from your music-related special events, shows, and venues. For more information, go to letstalkaboutthemusic.com. Hey, this is the Spider from Let's Talk About the Music. Tune in on July 13th. We'll be talking to Kiss Is Kill. We'll be talking to James about the difference between being in a band and being a composer. So tune in from 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. Pacific. 